Hello and welcome to Home Inspector MD with today's topic of what is the difference between conventional, mid and high efficiency gas furnaces. Today, everything here in Canada must be high efficiency. But how do we get from 60% to 95% efficient? But first, what does efficiency mean when we're talking about furnaces? We're talking about older conventional furnaces we usually say they have an efficiency of around 60%. As a reminder, the output capacity of a furnace is measured in BTU, British Thermal Units. So it's like saying, if you input 100,000 BTUs per hour into the furnace, and the output you get from heating is 60,000 BTUs per hour, then you have an efficiency of 60%. Now, out of that 40% we lose, when the furnace is on, about 20% of that is just all that heated air the furnace created leaving the house from that hole in your house called a chimney. The rest of the 20% remaining that we lose occurs when the furnace is not even running. From that 20%, about 15% of the loss comes from just the normal house air leaving from the chimney. And 5% comes from the standing pilot light. Remember that this is an old conventional furnace where you have a pilot light from the gas line operating all the time. So an old conventional furnace is not very efficient at only about 60%, wasting 40 cents on each dollar we put into eating. And with conventional furnaces, we are only exhausting the combustion air at the roof of a house from something like a B-vent metal chimney, and it would have to run the entire height of the house, as there is no side venting. The other visible indicator of an old conventional furnace is the presence of a natural draft burner, as these do not have a fan to help exhaust gases out of the house. The hot gases just rise up and exit out of the house. Of course, there should not be any conventional furnaces operating in homes today, but there could be mid-efficiency furnaces in some homes today. If so, they would be operating past their typical life expectancy. Mid-efficiency furnaces operate at about 75 to 80%, a clear step up from conventional, but where does this increase come from? Most of that comes from just blocking the hole in the chimney when the furnace is not in use. The simplest solution to this is from an automatic vent dampener. Simple in operation, it's just a metal flap that opens when the furnace is in use and closes when not. The other savings can come from replacing that continuous pilot light we talked about with an on-demand ignition type. When you turn on the furnace, the igniter can create a spark on demand to ignite the burners. And then more advancements in furnace design came along. Induced draft burners replaced those natural draft burners and the automatic vent dampener. These furnaces have an inducer fan that pulls air into the burner and then out through the vent connector. And the inducer fan also takes the place of that automatic vent dampener because the fan blocks the warm air from exiting when the furnace is off. Improvements in the heat exchanger design also improve efficiency by being more restrictive so the hot gases spend more time in the heat exchanger. The longer it remains in the heat exchanger, the more heat you get from it. Today, you have no choice but to install a high efficiency furnace. These furnaces will be at 90% but can exceed 95%. These high efficiency furnaces will have similar features introduced in the mid efficiency furnaces, but they include one major advancement that makes a big difference. And that feature provides its name, condensing furnaces. The biggest change here is not only a longer heat exchanger, but a secondary heat exchanger. This is something you're not going to see in your furnace. So here's a picture of just the heat exchanger showing the primary 
and secondary U exchanger located here. Notice the fin type design to create more metal surface area, which helps in efficiency. So why does this secondary heat exchanger matter? Because this is where the gases cool as they move along this longer distance. They release a massive amount of heat when it changes from a gas to a liquid state. This comes from the principle of latent heat of vaporization. To quickly summarize, if you boil water and go from zero degrees to 100 degrees, it takes a certain amount of energy to heat it up while still in liquid form. But then if you go from that liquid state into a gas state, while still at the same temperature, you need almost seven times more energy. This principle also works in reverse. That's why we can release about seven times more heat energy in the furnace. Now, water is the byproduct, and that is why you see plastic tubing coming from the furnace. This directs the water away to be discharged. Normally, that would be the floor drain or a laundry basin using a pump. The most common way to ID that you have a high efficiency furnace is the two PVC pipes exiting the furnace cabinet. These two pipes exit the house through the side of the house instead of the roof. In Canada, these would be labeled as ULC S636 pipes. The good part of this setup is that you're getting the combustion air for the burners from cleaned outside air instead of the already heated interior air like the older furnaces. Unfortunately, when installing these high efficiency furnaces, some contractors left it open inside. So you are left using already heated air for the combustion air intake. So with high efficient gas furnaces we have today, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of them? The advantages are pretty clear, more bang for your buck. With 90, 95% efficiency, you are getting almost all your money back that you put into the furnace. Also, the gas exhaust temperatures are much lower to the point where you can now use easy to install PVC piping and exit out of the side of the house, the side of the roof. Plus with direct venting, you can use fresh air as your intake of combustion air that is needed for the burners instead of already heated air from the house. Of course, the next question is, how can there be any disadvantages of a high efficiency gas furnace? Well, actually there are a few. Other than being more complicated with more possible issues and replacement parts, it may not last as long as older furnaces. You also have a gas furnace that creates water from that secondary heat exchanger, and that needs to be drained out by adding more condensate lines to the system. These condensate lines may break or it may get clogged, which will result in water overflow in the system. So there is a greater chance of rust and damage. Well, that's our brief look into the differences between conventional, mid, and high efficiency furnaces. If you find the information here useful, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up and think about us on your next home inspection. You want more videos such as this? Check these out.